What's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be looking at clothesline math. All right, so clothesline math is another team building routine. And if you've seen other videos, you know that what I mean by team building routine is where students have to work together and kind of complete something. And not just work together, but their answers build off one another. So this resource here is from Chris Shore. It's, the book is called Clothesline Math, but he also has a website, which I'll link as well, also called Clothesline Math. All right, so let's look into how this works. This is actually an example of a kindergarten room that I was in. All right, so to start off, you have a clothesline put up, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. Then you have students use uh, number tense, which you can see here, and they're just like folded over. Um, number tense with a specific thing on their card. So in this example for the kindergarten room that I was in, I gave students cards with digits, right? So you see the one, the five, the six, but I also gave them subitizing dots as well, as you can see with the two and the three here. You can't see it on this picture, but I also gave them shapes where they had to count the number of sides. So they would have a triangle, which would make three sides. And what students did, I mean, the clothesline was blank. I put one number to start with, and it was randomly like a six in the, you know, towards the middle. And students had to take their card and come up and place it where they think it went. Now, if a three was already on there, there was another student in the class that had three subitizing dots. So they would just place it on top of the number three that was already on there. That's kind of the gist of it. Let me go into it a little bit further. Let's start off with the materials. So it's called clothesline math. So obviously you can have a clothesline or twine or yarn or whatever, but if you're using like a technology, you can just draw a line on the board and students can drag the cards off of the smart board or whatever tech device that you're using. But we'll go through the physical version. So I have a clothesline up made out of whatever, and then I have these number tents. So for myself, I just take a paper and fold it over. As you can see here in this example, there's the dotted lines where you cut, and then I just flip it over. And it looks like a tent, so that's why they're called number tents. And honestly, they tend to sit in place, so you don't have to worry about them falling off and going crazy. Okay, so let's go through the routine. This a, is a specific example from one of the rooms that I was in. So at first, I actually strategically give students specific number tents, right? Because when you're starting off with the routine, you want students to understand how the routine goes and um, you really want to give them an opportunity to feel successful in the routine. So I typically uh, am specific with what I give them only at first just to get that routine down. And then as I said before, I place one number 10 on this clothesline or number line honestly because it really is a number line. So I place one number 10 on there. It's basically a benchmark for them so they can see where are they really gonna put theirs? On the left of mine, on the right of mine? They have to reason through that. And then students come up one at a time and they place their number tent. Um, they can have some discussions before, right? You can put them in triads or with partners and they can look at each other's cards and talk about where they think they should place it. But again, this is why this is team building, right? Because if the student before them place a number card, or number tent in the wrong spot, and it's actually in the spot that they're supposed to be in, then they actually have to move that other student's number tent. So it's encouraging them to catch you know, mistakes um, and also reason through their card as well. Okay, so I wanna talk about the cards really quick. So as you can see here, it's not just digits and subitizing like I showed you before. You can do it with equations as well. So the first number 10 is 10 take away five, which is five, right? then 16 take away eight, then five plus five, which is 10. So what am I seeing here? I have five, I have eight, I have 10. So it's increasing. Then there's a space, right? So we have to think about, the class has to think about, is there supposed to be a space there? If so, why? What should go in there? Things like that. Then I have seven plus seven is 14, eight plus eight, right? So I have one card that I did not put up yet and I hold on to it, let's just say and the card is 18 take away nine. I can ask the students, okay, where should I put this and why? So not only are students 
worrying about their card and where it should go, but I actually could prompt them with one that I have myself. And then if we look at this number line and my card was, what was my card? 18, take away nine, which is nine. That means that it doesn't have a spot here, right? Because nine is less than 10 and I see my five plus five is 10. So there's no room for my number 10 there, which means I have to do a shift. And that's what you're hoping students catch. Now it gets hella crazy because you could also have a double clothesline or really a double number line. I say number line because honestly, it's just a physical number line. You can even have a triple clothesline. Let's just go through this example of a double one. All right, so this is a primary level one, right? So I have one on the top number line and then I have a subitizing dot of one right underneath. Then as you can see, the same continues two and two, three and three, four and four. Then I have some question marks on there. So I have 12 take away six, which is gonna give me six. So the students have to think about what card would go on that upper number line. And really they can do this with all the other question marks that you see on here. Now here's why this is so important because as students get older, they have to deal with like tape diagrams and and double number lines when they're dealing with fractions. If we do this work early on with our, with our little kids, it will be less intimidating for students when they get older because they're used to seeing two number lines, right, parallel, and that the same part of the number line is equivalent, right? So if I have four on the top and I have four on the bottom, that section of my number lines, of both number lines, are equivalent. So it really transitions nicely to when students are, you know, placing fractions on the number line, placing decimals on the number line, placing fractions and decimals on the number line. You really could use clothesline for anything. You can use it for whole number fractions, decimals, like we just mentioned, geometry, time, um, really any standard. And you can mix the standards. So here, for example, I have just plain digits and then I have shapes. That's it, digit and shapes. Now, as you can see here, my digits are one, two, three would be the triangle, which would mean that it has three sides. So I'm putting it to represent three, the number three. Now, as far as measurement, as you can see here, I have cards for students that are six inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, and then students would have to transfer that to feet, right? So I can give cards to some students that have inches on them and I could give some students cards that say feet and this is where you really want them to communicate and talk to each other before placing their card up on the number lines. You really want them to talk it through. Here's how time can fit in. So here I have different representations of time. So I have analog clocks and digital clocks and obviously they can place it in order. You could also talk about night and day. Um, but basically, a clock is just a number line in a circular form, right, if you think about it. So this is a great way to even introduce time because when you have that number line, you could actually just, or that clothesline, you could actually just take it and put it in a circle and then it makes a clock. I have a lesson on that that you'll see in a different video. But um, So you can definitely order the number tens uh, by time and give them different representations such as digital and analog clocks. As you can tell probably by now, I love aligning like numerical form and then visual form, right? So this is great for upper elementary. I mean, having them see, let's say six tenths in written form and then six tenths in a visual, right? or even that first one where it's four tenths, but then 40 hundredths. So students are uh, connecting that there and seeing the equivalence there. So this is Chris Shore, that's his book, Clothesline Math, and the website that I told you about earlier. And he has some videos, not just on setting up this routine, but important aspects of the routine, such as spacing. And you could even see this in this video. It's not just about the place they go in, it's also about the space that the students are using. It's really not enough for them to just plop cards on this clothesline. We always want them to do some proportional reasoning, right, some proportional spacing. So on his number line example, his benchmarks are zero and one, right, and students have to place fractions on there. So you really have to think about, does that half, you know, you don't want students just placing all of them close to the zero, right, and then just stacking them up in order. You want the half card, the number 10, to be on the halfway point. So it's not just about place, it's also about space. And I'm gonna end on this note. This is not only a great number sense routine, 
but it's also a great center activity that you can use as well. So you could have them do it in two ways at a center. One is where you just give them a bunch of number tens and they specifically just have to work through all of the number tens by themselves, right? When they're at that center, or you can have them like rotate through that center. So for example, if there's five kids at that center, they can take a couple cards, maybe one each, place it on the clothesline. And then the next group of students would take different cards, place it on the clothesline. So it's more um, collaborative because they're building off of each other. So there's a couple different ways that you can kind of attack that center. All right, everyone, that's a wrap for me. I cannot wait to see what you guys do with clothesline math.